coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, NYPD unveils new unmanned aircraft system program, Aerobotics receives unique FAA waiver for beyond visual line of sight UAS operations, and National Park Service uses AeroVironment Quantix drone in Woolsey fire recovery. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. The NYPD has unveiled a new UAS program, which will be comprised of newly acquired UAVs and the licensed NYPD officers of the Technical Assistance Response Unit who will operate them. The Technical Assistance Response Unit provides specialized investigative equipment and tactical support to all bureaus within the NYPD, from officers on patrol to the Emergency Service Unit. The unit's expertise in audiovisual technology helps enhance investigations through recovery of surveillance video footage, record police action of large-scale demonstrations and arrest situations, and provide crucial live video to incident commanders during ongoing emergency situations. This technology is another tool that the NYPD can deploy selectively to help keep New Yorkers safe and enhance officer safety. The UAS program can help NYPD gather crucial information as situations unfold without putting officers at risk and lessen harm and danger to civilians. The department will operate three types of aircraft, the DJI Mavic Pro, DJI M210 RTK, and a DJI Inspire 1. Across the country, there are more than 900 state and local police, fire, and emergency units with UAVs. During the NYPD's research and development stage, NYPD officials met with other police departments to learn about their programs. Additionally, the department solicited feedback from city council members and advocates. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Shebo has been awarded a Maritime Surveillance Service Provision Contract by the European Maritime Safety Agency. In fulfillment of the contract, Shebo will provide simultaneous maritime surveillance services at several sites. The S-100 UAV will be equipped with an L3 Westcam MX-10 electro-optical infrared camera gimbal and an Overwatch imaging PT-8 OceanWatch payload, as well as an automatic identification system receiver. Invert Robotics unveiled its latest robot at the recent International Federation of Airworthiness Conference in Dubai. The remote-controlled climbing robots provide significant efficiency improvements for airlines in the aircraft MRO sector. A patented suction mechanism enables the robots to adhere to and traverse aircraft surfaces, even when they are wet or upside down. A high-resolution inspection camera records and transmits video images to a ground-based screen for analysis by line maintenance staff. The FAA has introduced a fictitious social media mascot that they hope will keep new operators out of trouble. The FAA's Buzzy the Drone was created to help newbies learn the do's and don'ts of being a responsible drone operator and flying your new purchase safely. The FAA plans to promote Buzzy's adventures on FAA social media, such as Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. They note that Buzzy's messages are the latest in the FAA's continuing efforts to make sure everyone follows the rules for safe drone operations. The Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directorate has selected PAE-ISR to participate in the Robotic Aircraft Sensor Program Borders. DHS S&T is looking for unmanned aerial systems with different sensors useful in search and rescue, reconnaissance, active shooter response, hostage rescue situations, 
and many other border and critical infrastructure security scenarios. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Just a few weeks after announcing that it had received $30 million in funding, Air Robotics has now announced that it has become the first company in the United States to receive a certification of waiver from the FAA that combines three elements. Flying beyond visual line of sight for automated UAS operations over human beings with a visual observer that is not required to keep a visual line of sight on the UAS. The waiver which allows Aerobotics to operate from its remote operations center in Scottsdale, Arizona will primarily be used within the mining sector, but it will also be used for other industrial facilities in the U.S. as well. Aerobotics says that its automated technology represents the next generation of drone operations as it overtakes standard piloted services, which are expensive, inaccurate, and not always available, the company says. Aerobotics reports that it is the first UAS technology in the world certified to fly without a human operator, having received certification from Civil Aviation Authority of Israel in March 2017. The National Park Service Inventory and Monitoring Program used AeroVironment's Quantix Hybrid Drone and Decision Support System Advanced Data Analytics Platform to assess the environmental impact of the Woolsey wildfire. Burning over 96,949 acres, the Woolsey wildfire destroyed more than 616 park structures and consumed approximately 88% of NPS land within the recreation area. Working in close collaboration with the National Park Service park rangers and scientists, AeroVironment Commercial Information Solutions, Unmanned Aircraft Systems, Flight Operations, and Geographic Information Science Teams have initiated a comprehensive drone-based aerial imaging and environmental impact study to assess fire damage in key areas of the park. Aerial imagery data collected will be used to quantify oak tree mortality and vegetation stress, in addition to documenting the dramatic changes in park visitor experience. The drone was used to capture high-resolution aerial imagery and quickly map the affected burn area, leading to actionable insights into the scope and scale of the damage. In addition to immediate disaster response and damage assessment, data collected will facilitate the development of a long-term environmental recovery and park rebuilding strategy. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next time.